Hey y'all, in this lesson, I'm going to be showing how to find the zeros of a polynomial by looking at the equation and the graph. We have a couple different examples here and they all look a little bit similar in that they all have the same factors. So each of them has x, x minus one and x plus two, but you'll notice that maybe the exponents on those factors differ a little bit. So we're just gonna be kind of comparing what the graph looks like at each x-intercept to explore maybe what's happening. We know from the zero product property that if we split up each factor and set each one equal to zero, then we can solve each factor separately and we get uh, solutions or zeros at zero, one, and negative two. Now I kind of rushed through that because I've already taught it, but I've set each factor equal to zero and solved each one to get those solutions. And then I also want to know a little, little bit about the degree of the polynomial. And if you remember, the degree is the highest exponent. Now this is all expanded out. If we were to, uh, or factored out, if we were to multiply it all together, then the biggest exponent we would have would be x times x times x, which is x to the third. x to the third has a degree of three. So that's gonna tell you kind of uh, the in behavior of your polynomial. Now, in the next question, it says, how does the graph behave at each of these zeros? So let's just quickly look at a graph. We don't have to draw it by hand because we have a calculator. So, and I'm not teaching necessarily graphing in this lesson. So I'm gonna use the calculator to my advantage. I'm gonna to go to y equals, and I'm gonna type in this function x times x minus one times x plus two. And then I'm gonna to go to the graph. And what I'm hoping to do is note what's happening at each x intercept or each zero. So at zero, the graph goes through zero. So I'm just gonna write that down, goes through. At one, it also goes through. And at negative two, it also goes through. So what I want you to kind of see Actually, we'll do the next one because I think you're, you might start to see how these functions compare. In the next example, we have the same factors, but the last factor has a squared on it. So this might change what our graph looks like. If you remember the graph of an X squared, that's a U-shaped graph. Keep that in mind as we look at this on a coordinate plane. Now the zeros are still the same. That doesn't change. I should put those in order. I should put the negative first. That's a good habit. I'm gonna do that. Negative two, zero, one. It really doesn't matter, but in order is nicer. And then the degree, remember that is multiplying the X's together, but this x is squared. So I have x squared times x times x is x to the fourth, which is a fourth degree. This has a second, this is to the second power, this is to the first power, this is to the first power. So if I look at the graph, if you wanna pause it, graph it and state what happens at each zero, go ahead and do that. If you wanna just watch, then you can watch me use this calculator. I'm gonna to go to y equals. It's the same function, except now I have a squared on that last factor. Hit graph. Hmm, that looks a little different. At negative two, what do you notice? It no longer goes through negative two, it bounces. It kind of follows that quadratic shape which kind of makes sense because it's to the second power. So at 
negative two, it goes, it bounces. That's what we'll call it. At negative two, it bounces. I'm actually going to change the order here so that we can compare it a little bit better that way. There we go. And then at zero, having trouble here. There we go. <laughs> at zero, it goes through again. And at one, it goes through again. I'm going to abbreviate here. That is not how you spell through. That's wrong, but we're just taking notes. So I'm going to abbreviate. And then now put the last one in your calculator and see how it compares. This is the last function in the calculator. You'll see at negative two, the only thing that changed in our function is the factor where it has a zero at negative two. It no longer bounces. It kind of jogs through maybe, but it does go through. And then same thing at zero goes through, same thing at one goes through. Those didn't change as far as comparing the functions, the original functions. The only one that changed was the x plus two. So let's take a minute and let's pay attention to what's happening. In each function, all the factors were the same. What changed was the exponent on the last factor. Now I could have changed the exponent on any of the factors, but I just chose the last one. And we saw that when x plus two was to the first power, it went through the x-intercept. When it was to the second power, it bounced like a quadratic. And then when it was to the third power, it kind of jogged through like an x to the third function, the parent function of a cubic function. It looked kind of like that. So it's behaving like a cubic function at the factor that's raised to the third power. Over here, it's behaving like a quadratic on the factor that has it to the second power. So that exponent on that factor indicates the behavior of the function at that point. In this last one, the degree of the function is three, four, five, fifth degree, because this is to the third power, first and first, three plus one plus one is five. And so that the degree is not going to necessarily tell you what happens at each zero, but it is going to tell you a little something about the um, endpoints. Remember for odd degree polynomials, the endpoints went in the opposite direction. And for even degree polynomials, they went in the same direction. Sarge, lay down. Uh, we have an example here. Write a polynomial in factored form. It has a simple zero at x equals two, a bouncing zero at x equals negative three, and a degree of three. So you might be wondering, oh, and a leading coefficient of five. How am I going to write that? Well, it's not necessarily, it's giving you enough information with what we know that you could write the equation. So we know that for a function, we're going to have to have some sort of function name, like f of x. And then we also know that it has a leading coefficient of 5. So in factored form, that 5 is going to be outside in front. Your first 0 is at x equals 2. For x equals 2 to be a 0, we would subtract 2 on the other side to get it as a factor. And it says it's a simple zero, which means it's just a like a linear factor. It just goes through simple zero, so it's to the first power. A bouncing zero, we saw from the table above, meant it was a U-shaped graph or an even degree. Uh, in, the, in the case above, it was to the second degree. Bouncing could really be any kind of even power. In the specific case above, it was to the second power. But we're going to kind of pin that for a second because we do know it's bouncing. So that indicates an even exponent. 
at x equals negative three. So we're gonna add three to the other side to make it um, a factor. And we also know that it has a degree of three. This means that all of the exponents on the x's need to add up to three because we would be multiplying all the x's together. We also know that this is even, which means it has to be raised to the second, fourth, sixth, eighth, whatever power. So if this one is definitely to the first power, then this one needs to be to the second power so that it satisfies both conditions. It's a bouncing zero and we have an entire, de the degree of the polynomial is three. So we have x squared and x makes x to the third. And that's it, that's all at once. In the next example, we're writing a polynomial in factored form that has a jogging zero at x equals negative four, a simple zero at x equals one and a bouncing zero, this is a fun one, at x equals three with a degree of eight and a leading coefficient of negative one half. So I'm writing a function, I need to name my fun function, funky function. I'm gonna name it g of x. You can do f of x again if you want. I know it has a coefficient of negative one half. And then I have a couple zeros. I have one at x equals negative four. I have one at x equals one. And I have one at x equals three. So you'll notice that when I said that, I went ahead and moved it over in my mind because we're kind of undoing the solving. And for x to equal three as one of the zeros, then that would mean it had to start out as x minus three because we would add three to both sides, if you recall from my previous videos. Uh, and then we have a total degree of eight. Right now we have a degree of one, two, three. So there's some information in here that's gonna change the exponents on our factors. A jogging zero for this one might indicate maybe a third power. We definitely know it's an odd power. Jogging means odd power. Simple zero also means odd power, usually one. For it to be simple, that usually means a degree of one. And then a bouncing zero, that means even, at x equals three. So if we kind of play around with the numbers, in my mind, I'm thinking, this may not be right, but I'm thinking for jogging, it might be a three, this might be a one, this might be a two. So let's see if that adds up. It's a degree of eight, so three, four, five, six. Not quite right. Hmm, I wanna leave this as a simple zero raised to the first power. Uh, if I changed this to five, this one right here, that would be five, six, seven, eight. That would work. Or what if I change this to the fourth power? Three, seven, eight, that would work. You could even change this one if you wanted to. Simple does mean that it goes through. I like keeping it a one because simple just that makes sense to me. You could change this to a three. And that would be six, eight. So there's several different possibilities here. Um, I would say three, three, two is a good choice or um, three, one, four, that would work, or uh, five, one, two, that would work. But any of those would satisfy all of these conditions. And you can kind of look at the graph and play around with those exponents to figure out uh, which one works, basically. But that's that. So we have made a polynomial that satisfies those conditions, and that's what it's asking for. In the next example, we have a table of values 
and it's not telling us coefficients, the leading coefficient, and it's not telling us uh, whether there's bouncing or jogging or simple or going through or anything like that. So in this case, we are going to start with factored form and we're gonna use the information that we are given. We know that there is a zero here, here, and here, which means that those are factors. For these to be a zero, then that means that it started out as a factor. And I do wanna point out on this one, if we subtract a half, we don't normally see it written that way. So if you multiply everything by two, that's a little bit more common. So we've got f of x equals a, which we don't know, times each factor, which we get from the zeros in the table. Now I need to find that a value. So if I only had maybe one more point that I could plug into X and Y, then maybe I could find A. Coincidentally, there's another point. So we're gonna plug that point in. This is X, um, sorry, this is X, this is Y, or even we can leave it as F of X. So 28 equals a times x is zero plus two x is zero minus four x is zero minus one then we simplify inside the parentheses zero plus two zero minus four uh, zero minus one then multiply negative eight times negative one is positive eight. Then divide to solve for A. This means now I can write the equation of my polynomial. We've got F of X equals A, which is eight over 28. It's kind of a weird number. Actually, you know what? I need to reduce that by two, four, by four, to get two sevenths, that's a little bit better, times my first factor, times my second factor, times my third factor. And you know what? I am seeing a mistake here. I knew something didn't seem right. I flip-flopped that. <laughs> I divided, but I wrote it backwards. So that's 28 over seven, which is, oh my gosh, 28 over eight, which is seven over two. And then when you put that in your calculator and you check the table, your points should match. If they don't match, then you know you've done something wrong and you can go back in and fix it. That's all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help. See you in the next one.